champion is that he has good options at almost every range, short, medium, and long. So there is that there as well. But looking over on the Chiefs, trying to figure out what their comp does, I do agree with the low damage sentiment there, but it's a weird one. It's basically a full tank comp almost. I mean, it's a very, very tanky lineup in the late game. The other thing to consider is they're picking Rumble into the likes of Siva, who has the on-the-hunt, the mobility to get away from an equalizer. They're already not having the lockdown CC to set up with. It's a very, very tanky lineup in the late games. There is the potential that even if Ari gets big, she won't be able to get through any sort of frontline, even with her consistent damage rotations. Going to find it's hard to damage down a Scion in the frontline, for example. So... It's a lot of damage. It's, it's a very low damage comp. It's very tanky, but you kind of need the Vladimir to hit the item spikes. And Swiffer, we don't see him a lot on Vladimir. I don't know if we've actually seen him in the OPL season play that champion at all. Obviously, a late addition to his champion pool. Is he confident enough to take it into this Ari matchup? I mean, it's weird as well because he counterpicked for himself there. And it's not a bad matchup per se no. for Vlad, but it's at least slightly unfavorable, especially in the early stages of the lane. I mean, I think Ari probably has the advantage in the early levels, but basically that's the same as any Vladimir matchup, right? That's just the reality of him as a champion. From level 9 onwards, I feel like there's not a lot of kill pressure anymore for the Ari. So we'll wait to see if the Oculus can make things happen in that mid lane, set up energy, who's usually known as the passive laner. But to be honest, he's the one who really has the potential to unsettle this Chiefs comp. Well, we are onto the rift now for this game here. The Chiefs versus Besiktas, the Oceanic team versus the hometown heroes from Turkey. It's been a, a decent day for them both. The Chiefs still undefeated at 2-0. Besiktas actually won one in their two games, and both teams have to play a third game today here in this one. So... They'll either keep the Chiefs undefeated score alive, but Rosie this time might be doing his best swiper impression, almost face-checking a full team, but does get out of the way. One of the hardest champions to pin down, specifically supports, is of course that Nautilus. Can always skill the dredge line and get to terrain and open up distance. So hard to make him use any summoners at level 1, even if you catch him out with CC. So happy to just walk away. But Shriktash, they get a couple of aggressive wards, and again, they're trying to spot the lane swap. That's been the kind of consistent trend of the level 1s today. Perhaps a slight miscommunication it actually put two wards together there into that brush so unfortunately you don't get the double vision from double warding it so maybe uh, wanted to put one of those somewhere else but do get good vision of the bottom side at least here as well and you can see the Chiefs sort of hanging out with the dual lane towards the bottom side of the map so might just be looking for standard lanes anyway and given the positioning of the Besiktas duo as well I think we're just going to have a 2v2. There's definitely no big demand in terms of lane matchups that really commands a lane swap. They're going to be happy with 1v1 action. They're going to be happy with standard lanes in general. Scion, he's, a, he's at the Raptors. You know he's going to be dying to pick up that early level too. But the jungle follow is at least started by Thaldron. But, or maybe it's just a leash. Yeah, it might be just a bit of a leash. There looks to be the case here as we do see Swiper up taking a camp, of course. Going to use his passive there on the Raptor camp. Should be able to uh, kill himself and then kill the camp quickly and teleport back to the top lane. This is, at this point, very standard Scion play. Absolutely. Just picks up the quick level two. Now has the flexible options. Has already picked up the potion, so it's certainly not going to be a huge item pickup. But it's the level two. He gets to lane with only a few minions having died and feels fine. Yeah, a couple of extra potions there. And again, going to come back in with an experienced lead here up against Thaldron. So... Fun stuff there from the sign. We have seen teams start to get aggressive with their early scouting and deny some of these early camps from top laners, but Swiper not denied in this instance as Spooks jungling down the bottom side, actually looking to steal away the blue buff. Yeah, I mean, Nunu seems to be enacting vertical jungling, even without a jungle follow or any sort of lane swap happening. In a 2v2 situation, Siv is always going to have the advantage in terms of lane pushing at level 2 onwards, for example, in this particular lane. So Nunu happy to steal away a buff. Gragas might smell it out and go for the counter trade, although this looks like a lot of members yeah, mid. Yeah, mid lane gang coming. Flash there coming through. Energy gets snared up. Looking for the snowball there as the dredge line does not come out. So a decent attempt there. They get a flash. Yeah, but they get a, a trade flashes from the chief support player, but that's critically energy's flash in the mid. We mentioned the fact that Ari should be able to bully this matchup. Suddenly, so much more risky to overextend the lane. Swiffer already showed his prowess at holding a minion wave as LeBlanc against Orianna, even against strong wave clear. So in this case, going to be happy to kind of repeat that situation and try and say ahead or competitive in CS with the R. And the news, I believe, goes from bad to worse for Besiktas early on as Spooks has now officially three buffed the Turkish jungler. That's just some creative Nunu path in coming out. It was definitely not the safest option, but they communicated with bot lane. Radiant Rosie pushed up. Enough space to both get an invade in the mid lane in terms of blowing 
Blazing Flashes, but also steal away a buff. Very good jungle pathing and support play from the Chiefs. Say some good trade though here. Nadius getting aggressive on that Lucian. That's another missed spell shield there from Raider. Maybe he hasn't quite gotten back to the old reflexes on Sivir just yet, but should be fine here in the bottom side. Lucian going to get an early edge in the matchup, but Sivir kind of neutralizes quite a few matchups. This one, I think, probably going to be the same. Exactly. It's going to be a fairly even lane matchup. Definitely the trade into damage because it does instant trades from the piercing light, as we see. Look at this. Oh, someone's lying in bed watching the game. I mean, I can't blame it. It's pretty early or late, depending on where you are in the world, but good stuff here. Glad to see someone watching the game. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. We're watching the bot lane coming through. Theocles just looking to pick up the Scuttle Crab. Things get a bit quieter now that Nuna's got his buffs. He's just happily jungling up. Has a ward, has a pink ward. Has gone for the Ranger's Trailblazer instead of going for a very fast sight stone that we sometimes see coming through from these Nunas. And actually the junglers look like they're going to meet. Yeah, going to have a bit of a party here towards the Raptor camp. Spook's going to get aggressed on and Theocles now going to take some damage. Swift is coming through. Spook's though getting a little low, but good damage there from Swiffer. Snowball in as well. Energy also going to come in. That's going to force Spooks to flash. Swiffer pops his ghost. He wants the kill. He's going to run in, but Gragas not quite low enough. Flash forward! First blood with the tides of blood. Energy though chasing in. Ignite is down and that should be a kill in his energy. Gonna get the next one, but Rosie coming through. Dumbledore is coming for the follow as well. And a trade there, but Swiffer does get the first kill. Swiffer uses both of his summoner spells to pick up that kill. A real overextension just for the extra 100 gold in the trade. Ari's gonna push in the waves. He's gonna lose some minions. Don't know if the double summoner trade was a it was worth the, the first blood kill credit, I have to say. I mean, Swiffer, pretty classically an aggressive player, loves to get a kill if he thinks he can get for it, even if he does have to overreach at times. And that was quite the overreach. And I guess this was the biggest thing for me, looking at Swiffer and seeing Vladimir in this game that he selected. A fine champion, very strong in this matter, but not the same playmaker, at least not in the early levels where Swiffer really likes to dictate pace in the games. You take Flash Ghost, you go all in on this jungle, and you can make anything happen. The worth, thing to worth considering, maybe he understands his gold value and knew that he could get a first back Hextech Revolver to improve this laning situation that honestly was already going pretty well for him. Theocles could be in trouble now. No flash either. Does body slam over the wall, but Swiffer still chasing in. A good cask will keep him away, but a Q there just for a bit of trade damage as the Chiefs protect their pink ward. And I feel like Swiffer's taking the approach that if he always plays like the junglers there, he's going to force energy onto the back, back foot and energy already known as more of a wave clear champion, wave clear player, known more for the Zerath and Lulu type champions. That's the ultimate. Good flash there from Daldrian. Ultimate already used as well for Rumble, so no real kill pressure here. Does overheat and flame spit of Spooks down, but Swiper going to get away as well, and another flash forced by Nunu. Spooks has already shown a lot of lane presence, even on the Nunu, as we see. The Decimating Smash Max does a lot of damage to those minions. Had monsters damage re uh, reduced, but not definitely not the lane minions. Yeah, we can see Theocles actually taking away the Gromp. I believe energy level 6 Swiffer now there as well. But the Gragas going to take a little bit of jungle away after Spooks' early shenanigans with the three buff. And Ari still looking to trade energy. Double Dorans in a Fiendish Codex. More than happy to stand up to Vladimir right now. Vladimir's already got the sustain going, getting closer and closer to level 7, let alone level 9. Should be comfortable in this lane. And it's very hard to have kill pressure on a Vladimir just because getting him in range of your full combo, even incorporating hitting all your skill shots, is that much more difficult to do when he's got 150, 200 health on a 3, 4 second cooldown. And like we've said, this lane does get better over time for Vladimir. So Revolver done, level 6. Look for the level 9 to come through as well. And we'll see if that does tip Nadia. So going to get aggressive. Radio again. A bit of a preemptive spell shield there. But, you know, we'll be just fine. Keeping up reasonably in CS, but Nadia on the Lucian starting to take over just a little bit ahead by about 15 or so. And it's Radius' third game in a row on the server. Has been very aggressive on this champion, going against some of the previous conventions of Radius years past. But, I mean, struggling in the laning phase, getting bluffed out a lot by aggression when it comes to using that spell shield. Needs to be a bit more trusty on the spell shield button, otherwise he'll continue to get punished in his lane matchup against the lane bully, Lucian. Yeah, Nunu, though, going to take a visit now down towards the bottom side, it seems like, but BJK already smelling that out. We'll back off there towards their turret. And Nunu, you know, he's in the area, but again, if he can't catch someone kind of overextended, it's very hard for Nunu to apply pressure. He's already bought a very early side stone, but hasn't actually used it for anything other than Dragon Vision. That's why you see him enter lane for what is just a gank on a minion wave. They're trying to create a, a, a situation where Sivir can back happily and not get punished in this situation because they instantly pushed in a wave. The next wave should meet. 
the Chief's wave so it won't get pushed into the tower for very long. And they're going to try and set up this dragon. They've already invested a pink ward and three green wards onto the dragon area, but they haven't managed to secure that objective just yet. Trading the top side as well. Thadron again starting to get a bit more aggressive. Spectre's Gal for Swiper will help him out massively in this lane, and he's keeping him pretty comfortably in CS as well. I mean, there's just not much kill pressure on a sign, whatever the situation. Some of his damage numbers were nerfed, but not in terms of his tankiness. So just happy to sit in that lane, become that unstoppable front line that Lucian theoretically will have a lot of trouble breaking. Theoclis took some damage from this dragon. Yes, yeah, Spook's actually spotting him out. Going to get damage boosted back towards the dragon by the cask. And Swiffer and Arosi are going to join in. Red is here timing. as well. Oh, teleport coming through. Thaldron wants to stop at the dragon getting low. Chase will teleport in as well. They do have to commit to the dragon. Nunu should be able to secure and does. And both top laners will teleport, but for no avail. Chase already with the objective. It's wonderful timing on the dragon. You saw that Ari... Uh, Nardeus and Dumbledore all coming out of base at the same time. They didn't stagger their back, so there was no immediate threat of a dragon still coming down. Thaldrin channeled his teleport. He's, of course, a rumble, taking dragon against a rumble. No trivial task, especially when the equalizer is just freshly ready and he's got a bit of ability power working towards a haunting guys. He just realized, crap, I have no backup whatsoever. The, the, there was always going to be a collapse. It was going to be a lost trade. So teleports equalized, but the result, first dragon to the Chiefs. And you can see the Eddie carries. BF Sword there for Siva, but BF Sword pickaxe now for the Lucian. And Rosie, a little too aggressive. Is Lucian going to dive back in? Depth charge is used, though. They are going to go back in, but Gragas coming down as well as Rady gets exhausted and poked out. Lucian getting low, but Gragas going to try and snipe somebody. Does not continue the chase, but that's going to force Siva out of lane. He doesn't have explosive cask available. Smart to back away. Turret dive. Yeah, ulti they're coming through. Spook's going to try to the ultimate. Decimatic Smash comboed in there as well. Massive damage coming through from Nunu. And Spooks collects the kill. The first successful gank comes through on top as we see a kill in the mid as well. Nice Energy gank. falls low, but they pick up the kill on Swiffer. Yeah, nice gank there from Theocles. Swiffer not able to get out of that one despite using his flash. And Raided down the bottom. Gets killed by the Lucian. Rosie going to flash in there as well, but can't stop Lucian under the turret. And Nadius gets away with a very cheeky dive. Radia dies with flash and heal available under his turret, just misjudged the situation completely. Wasn't expecting the aggression. They're looking for the turret dive. Rosie's tanky, though. Yeah, they are going to dive in. Nautilus doing a decent job. Lucian has to be careful. It's a little too low. Nautilus looking to go down. Greg is going to dive. He's got so much health. And Theocles is now going to collect another kill for his team. They knew no teleports were available. They got the top turret, but it looks like it's going to be a turret trade. And the kill credit's definitely in the advantage of Besiktas. And it's been great to see them be so aggressive here, I think. One of the things we looked at, but if you look at their games today, the differences between their win and their loss is certainly early momentum. And this game is a lot of early momentum. I agree with that. And then you look at the Chiefs games. In the first game, they got lucky that they were able to scale up in what was a scaling composition that the, the team they were facing wasn't able to, to pull the trigger on their small early advantages. In game two, they definitely took it over off the back of Swiffer on an assassin. It's much different when he's on the likes of Vladimir, who's looking to scale up, doesn't have the same roam pressure, has had his summoners on cooldown for the majority of this laning phase. Chiefs, though, do have the first dragon, but that's all they really have to show themselves from the early game, and maybe, of course, the first turret as well. And I think the Chiefs, again, still have decent scaling here as well, so they've been playing for very mid and late games, which has been interesting interesting to me given how aggressive they were regionally but we'll have to see how it shakes out Nunu can control objectives quite well here as Radio walking in towards the mid lane looks like a rumble may be happening absolutely there's five members of the Chiefs we're looking forward to as we see Radio finally exiting the mid lane not sure what the uh, occasion is still more than a minute and a half till Dragon the wards at the moment in the supremacy of Besiktas. So you'd expect Nunu to start to pay a visit towards the bottom side of the jungle to prep for the dragon. Yep. Energy with Morel and Omicron completed now as well. So starting to more aggressively push in the Vladimir. Swiffer was ahead in CS for a short time, but that has been equaled now by Arya. Swiffer will catch up and clean up the rest of the mini wave just before it gets into the tower. But a little bit of an experience lead here as well. Energy playing much more aggressively than we used to seeing him. Absolutely. He's trying to bait out the Sanguine pull, then look for the all-in, but hasn't thrown out the charm. And Swiffer confident enough to just wait for that projectile to come through. Yeah, trust his reflexes. There a Swiper back in the top side. Double Ruby Crystal and the Spectre Scale there. Again, just farming up. Equal on CS on the Rumble. Probably can't complain in this situation. You just have to wonder where the late game will go. Spooks is looking for a flank. Yeah, going in again onto Energy. They might even dive here as well. No, just a little bit of pressure. Do not not force the flash though, and despite Ari having no ultimate, the Nunu gank is unsuccessful. It's quite impressive that Swift that, that Spooks has been able to have 
consistent ganking pressure, blowing summoners, causing pressure in the lanes as a Nunu and keep up in farm. Radius fallen low. Yeah, in trouble now as well. Good ultimate there defensively popped by Siva and a good ulti from Nautilus to keep him away. But 30 CS down now is Radius on the Siva and things are going from bad to worse in the bottom lane for Chiefs. And honestly, I'd like to see another gank come through from Spooks and just come to the lane and help him push. Of course, they have excellent turret damage. The Nunu can help them clear waves instantly. But as this laning phase continues, it just gets more and more painful for Radius. Yeah. Swiffer again, He's looking to trade fairly aggressive here. Trust his uh, reflexes there in the skill shots and Ignite already down onto the Vladimir. So if he wants to keep going, he can. Looks like he wants to all in with Hemo Plague and in the jungle as well. The Ocul is looking aggressive, trying to take away a buff. Dumbledore will join in and Gragas will get the steal. It makes sense. Jana was able to react. The Chief's bottom lane had already had to recall, so no way to contest for that red buff coming through. 59 seconds until Dragon. But Besiktas in general have had the run of this bottom side of the map. The first dragon coming through the Chiefs. They need to start setting up if they want to pick up the second. And they're going to set up right now. It's up in 45 seconds. You usually want to leave a minute at minimum to set up for that objective. So we do see Radius going back. Hasn't quite finished up his IE. And Nadius has finished up his Infinity Edge and with a spare Brawler's Glove as well. So very well tuned to fight here, Arbor Shiktash. And I don't know if Chiefs are in the right position to contest for what should be their second dragon. I mean, they have vision over the area, but you're right. The item timing is definitely working for Besiktas. You'd be opting into a fight against a Rumble who's level 10 perilously close to that level 2 equalizer that should be able to run a fight. We said there's not a lot of setup CC for the Rumble ultimate. If you're all doing damage to the Dragon, especially as they're all 500 or shorter range carries, you're going to be taking Rumble damage. So it's still a big risk to opt into a Dragon fight against Rumble. It is indeed here. And the equalizer is still a decent zoning tool as well, which it can be used for in that sort of fight. So we'll see what happens. Energy you're going to clear some... Uh, minions out there on the Ari. Very strong wave crew at this particular point. Now level 11 there on the mid lane mage. And Vladimir getting stronger. That's a Negatron cloak and some cooldown boots added to the early Will of the Ancients already. But other than that, the Chiefs, a lot of components sitting in the inventories right now. Besiktash have started completing major items. I mean, Leandris, we didn't mention, is completed onto Thulj. And that first equalizer is going to be doing considerable damage. It's basically an equalizer only build because, of course, it doesn't build towards the Zonias that really helps you diving in the back lines, just overheating and throw, going into stasis to do damage to priority targets. It's equalizer-centric, but look at this. Only one creep away from level 11, but Nunu's there. Yeah, going to go in there. Thaldry could be in a bit of trouble there. Swiper also going to dive in. The slow comes through. Rosie finds a hook. Decimating smash, and Swiper gets the kill. But over towards the Dragon Pit, but Shiktash have already completed their first. I think they realize they'd be opting into giving up the Dragon, but they need to punish this top lane and take the turret. That's probably the thing they need to do. Actually, no, they already had it down, so it's just a kill for a Dragon. Dubious swap there for Chiefs. Yeah, the Oracle is looking aggressive as well, trying to poke someone off a turret instead. We'll proxy up the wave and look for his team to push in. Teleport is coming in for Swiper. Rosie might try and line up a kill here as well. Good slow there onto Dumbledore. Swiper channeling up the Q does get it cancelled there by a tornado. Midland is not able to join in the bottom side yet, and Bashiktash will walk away from the bottom lane. Bashiktash have so much more map presence than they did in that game against the Bangkok Titans. Against the ch uh, champion lineup that includes some elements of the mid game and then of course the Vladimir opting in towards more the late game. It's been Besiktas using their earlier power spikes through the likes of Rumble Ari and Lucian to, to a major degree and just taking over this game. And this is the difference between a Nunu team that's losing and a Nunu team that's able to rotate aggressively and pick up turrets. As Spooks has had a lot of lane impact, but still hasn't been able to translate that into any sort of map vision advantage. No, and all the early advantages that the Chiefs were able to get have now been equalized by the Turkish side as well. And they're even a thousand gold up as well, Arba Shiktas. So we'll have to see where they go from now. You think with the mid game power they have, they'll be able to continue keeping up the pressure. But the Chiefs, all they need to do is hold on and try not to fall any further behind than they already are. And for Besiktas, their kill credits they've picked up are pretty much ideal. Two kills onto the pick mage Ari. A kill to get Lucian Snowballing now even has an Avarice Blade on top of Boots 2 to keep the cash coming in. And, and Gragas picking up a kill credit. And the only person who's behind is Rumble. And although Rumble, fantastically strong, if you can pick up those items and really become relevant, still super relevant with just the Leandri's Torment for a team fight damage if he can hit the equalizers. So the person with the low item cap 
is doing the worst, and the person who can really start snowballing, the likes of Ari and Lucian, are doing well. So that's ideal for Besiktas. Yeah, ideal is the word for it here, is the Chiefs going to try and defend their tier 2 turret. Radia will absorb a bolt there with his shield, but the turret's getting low, looking to go down as the Charm does land onto Rosie. Tower will fall there. Great rotation by Besiktas and Swiffer down the bottom clearing. Creeps not able to help with the wave clear. Yeah, I mean, there must have been a call to send him to pick up the empty lane farm. Siva had been struggling in a long lane, very gankable. I guess with double escape summoners, they feel like Vladimir's the person to open up the split push. Hasn't necessarily paid a big item timing for the likes of Abyssal Scepter that you have to feel like he's opting into. It'll be interesting to see how the Ari versus Vladimir side lane matchup goes when there's no turret for Swiffer to defend. Yeah, Spooks and Rosie going to team up to take out the Scuttle Crab. That will go down there as they'll take it out on the Baron side. Swiffer going back from the bottom as well. Might have enough for that Abyssal Scepter and in fact does go back and complete that item as well. And Aegis also done for Swiper nice and early. Interesting to see him be the one that wants to pick up the item early. But again, item timing still coming through for Besiktas as well. Needlessly Large Rod added in there for Ari as well. I mean, I feel like Scion's been comfortably winning this lane, has got the gank pressure as well, but he's building for team rather than building selfishly. Will that be rewarding a fight? I guess maybe he's just negating the Leandri's Torment pickup that Rumble has, just giving his team magic resist to deal with the one item power spike from Rumble. The solution applying so much pressure, the radio still behind now, 35 CS as the Blood Bell comes down onto the Sivir as well. We'll have good wave clear here, we'll be able to sit in the mid and just farm as the waves push in, but that does give plenty of space here to Besiktas as well and you can see in the top side looking to potentially gank the Scion of all champions and he has to sit between his two turrets right now doesn't feel safe at the moment and just the Chiefs on the minimap are just a bit disorganized there's no other objectives to fight for it seems pretty predictable that Besiktas are rotating for this top turret they've got Swiffer just answering the split push from energy which is fine but finally they're trying to commit multiple members to push in this mid and Swiffer pretty happy to fight right now level 13 on the Vladimir with some strong items coming through so probably fancy him in any sort of 1v1 right now, despite the strength that Ari has. It would certainly be close, especially if that charm does land, but again, I think it's a fine person to put in a split push situation. It's just, what else are the Chiefs getting out of the map pressure? Because right now, Besiktas own most of this map. And the question comes, of course, as we have a bit of a lull in the action, who has this game in the late game? There's more damage sources on Besiktas's team, but I feel like the super tank Scion can outscale the damage, specifically from the magic damage dealers. Already is building both selfish and team-orientated magic resist pickups. And Lucian will struggle to kill him in the late game just because he's got a very high health pool. And of course, we'll start to build the likes of the Randuins and the armor items. So I feel like Swiper could be a core tenant of a team fight win. And then, you know, if you get those summoner spells on a short enough cooldown on Swiffer, if he's able to consistently launch himself into the back line, they're trading some early game objectives for farm onto the Vladimir. Already level 13, coming close to level 14. If Vladimir can show up at a late game team fight with his double scaling from his passive, you know, moving towards potentially the fifth dragon, I feel like there's definitely a team fight that the Chiefs win, but Besiktas should have a significant advantage in team fights for the next 10 or so minutes. And you can see there, Swiffer split pushing does actually pay off there. It's down the bottom. Energy getting low. The Hemo Blake popped as well as Energy Spirit rushes out of the way. And 1v1 almost completed by Swiffer, who was waiting in the rush. But Ari escapes with just a bit of health left. The Ghost and the Flash used to get that final transfusion wasn't enough to pick up the kill. Suddenly, it's super risky for Swiffer to overextend with no escape summoner spells, with no mobility spells in this bottom lane. So the fact that it might close a strategic hole that the Chiefs had been exploiting and they didn't even pick up their kill credit could be a problem for the Chiefs. They might need to go back to the whiteboard for at least the next four to five minutes while those summoner spells come back up. Energy's now returning as well with the parts of a death cap now completed. The cap itself not quite done, but Dragon is back up here. And the Turkish side look to get back on top of it for their second here as well. And you can see Dumbledore Genthiocle is already there. Energy going to rotate there with Nadius as well. And everyone's going to join in here. Rumble even walking down just in case he's required. But that second dragon easily handed over to Besiktas. Worth knowing that Chiefs got the first dragon. So they're getting the 6% stats. The first two dragons, the equalizer, and then the second dragon buff. Not that big a consideration. But the Chiefs aren't really doing anything with the extra time they have. Instead of contesting, they're just picking up a bit of side lane it indicates to me there's an indi that they're thinking they need to take this game to late. 
but Rosie's been caught. Yeah, Rosie gets Ulta back into the team. Does, can't quite flash actually, but Swiffer gonna rejoin in. Does pop down the Hemo Plague, but they are gonna move in. Good Sanguine Pool to dodge the Body Slam, and Swiper is joining in as well, but a wonderful equalizer chases flat away. Spooks gets low and is forced to get out of Swiper. Gets charmed in there as well. He's also forced to flash, and the ultimate's out of the way. But it's only one kill, but they get a lot of spells for it as well. They're fighting in the jungle against a level 13 Rumble who has the double magic penetration under the Andrews. Always a poor decision. In the end, the equalizer wasn't really the big consideration. They only lose one member, so to some degree, they lost the minimum. But again, the, there's complete map pressure advantage for Besiktas. The Chiefs at this point only have vision of their top side, blue side jungle of all things. That's going to lead to this outer turret going down. And the mid-game teamfight comp are piling on advantage after advantage of Besiktas. And the defensive wave clear is fairly poor. I mean, Siva is great in those situations, but Rady does not feel comfortable 1v4 under his own turret protecting it. Swiffer, interestingly, is sticking in the bottom side, looking for more farm, and the Chiefs are counter pushing nicely here towards the mid lane but that gold lead's growing it's 3,000 gold now for Besiktas looking to keep that going further as well again if the Chiefs can keep losing the minimum and get to a point where they can fight back they'll sh they will be able to turn it around at about 30 35 maybe 40 minutes but losing the minimum unfortunately is still losing and you want to try and gain some ground here if you can and there's some team fight comps where it makes sense to lose the minimum I'd say that Chiefs had the slight advantage in the late game, so I can understand giving up outer turrets for the likes of Vladimir picking up an extra item, but giving away an inner turret, then fighting in their own jungle, and then losing all control of their own jungle with, despite having double sight stone. I mean, to be honest, they maybe need to invest the 250 gold into the sweepers to try and just alleviate some of the massive map pressure that Bishop Dash have been able to open up. I mean, Swiffer almost has his double escape summoners up, so perhaps he can start overextending and causing map pressure himself in the bottom lane. But if your best plan is for your mid laner to overextend without a teleport, that's not really a strategic playbook that's going to actually get you towards a dragon. And Swiffer just, uh, you know, pulls because. Yeah, might have been an accidental sanguine pull. There does have a lot of CDR, so might not hurt him too much there. And Gragas didn't see it, so he doesn't know about it. Again, keeping the waves pushed back here. Very nicely, just on his own. And the Chiefs seem to be committing to a lot of 1-3-1 one, one in their games here today. So we'll keep Swiper in the top. We'll keep Swiffer in the bottom side as well. And right now, with Baron not being a real threat, some good neutral warding, at least, for the Chiefs coming through. We're going to have another long this game. Teams seem to be waiting between the Dragons. And honestly, Chiefs seem to be counting on the fact that Besiktas isn't going to make that decisive Baron control call or really go for a very strong rotation on the other side of the map. Remember, he does not have teleport. He's just over extending trying to, trying to cause enough map pressure that someone like Lucian comes and answers up because he's thinking, okay, 10 creeps for me, 10 creeps for Lucian. I'm going to scale into the late game better. I'm happy to opt into that trade. And I can understand that line of thinking, but he's also a mid laner with the most gold in his team, 42 CS up on the nearest person on his team that's not grouping and doesn't have a teleport. There's a lot of exploitation that can be done playing around of Vladimir overextending in the bottom lane. But so far, Besiktas, they've made some decisive movements, but they haven't been off the back of this over-ambitious split push from Swift. Yeah, they've really turned down a bit of the aggression here. And again, seem to be waiting between the major objectives. Energy, though, is going to get his blue buff. He does have his death cap finish now as well. Rumble actually has a death cap there as well. So not going for the zone. He just wants full damage coming through from all of his items. That's very high risk, high reward. But if you get into the front line with an overhead of flint spitter with those items, people will melt. I feel like the damage difference, though, between the death cap and the zonians is so negligible. And then, of course, you have the stasis, which ensures you're going to be doing damage in most situations for two and a half seconds longer than if you just died at the start of a fight. Death Cap is a viable rumble item. The one thing you can say is it gives a much better wave pushing because, of course, the extra ability power helps it to push down waves. But in this situation, against the likes of Vladimir, I might have preferred just an Abyssal Scepter, which actually makes him better at pushing from, you know, reducing the minion, the minion magic resist. And I feel like deals with this situation better. There's almost no situation where Death Cap is the ideal item on Rumble unless he hits the most picture-perfect equalizer of all time. And there's not even team fight synergy for that equalizer to come through. We'll have to see how it develops. As Dragon is back up in a minute, but Besiktas have other ideas. They're on top of Baron now. They've got great pink wall control. A good scrying of, though, will spot them out. So props to Radia there for that one. And the Chiefs, again, going to counter push. But Besiktas, they have a trap set. Are they going to spring it? They really want to line something up here. But the Chiefs look to disengage. Thaldron still chasing, but does not pull the trigger on his ultimate. Honestly, 
honestly, Chiefs made the best out of a bad situation. They couldn't face check any of the areas around Baron, so they tried to draw out Besiktas with first the scrying orb and then just pushing aggressively onto mid, feigning aggression, feigning that they would be able to contest Vladimir backs. And that should be a free Baron. I mean, yeah, Besiktas now on the Baron. They sent Swiper down to deal with the ridiculously big minion wave in the bottom side. But Baron is getting melted here by all of the damage spooks. Here we he go. Might try and steal it. He's going to go in. Get it, get it. He does. Takes away the Baron. Absolute zero channel. Not too much damage, but he staves off the Baron for now. I think he only had a pink ward up. Plops it down. Flashes. And you can see the smiles on his face on the... On the cams there, uh, they just stole away what should have been a certain Baron from Besiktas. But Dragon's still up. That could be their third if Besiktas want to go over it. And Spooks, he's dead right now and they don't have a second smite. So it would be a tricky one to contest here as well. If they can find a pick, maybe. But honestly, all the picking power, that's on the Turkish side here. I mean, look, the worth is still there, page time. The oh, third Dragon, oh, yes. it's, it's a nice one. But suddenly, what was a bit of a frivolous split, but now a massive one potentially from Vladimir with the Baron buff many. He's overextended though, and there's multiple members here to try and punish He's him. He's going in though, doesn't have a Zonia's pull, we'll have to know he does have his Zonia's, can he use it? No, doesn't quite find the time, too much damage in, and Swiffer does fall down. Yeah, finally punished for his overaggression, but good luck pushing against the Baron buff minions, and the uh, excellent wave clear coming through from the Sivir. Chiefs have just bought themselves three, four minutes of relevance in a game that Besiktas had complete control over. And that seems to be the Chiefs theme of at least games where they fall behind early. Just stick around, buy your time, and, and trust in the team fight. And Steel Baron, yes. <laughs> they had literally no vision, no way to get vision. He walked over, plopped over a pink ward, and stole the Baron. I don't know if that's really in the playbook for good junglers, but Spooks making a case not for the it. Not the first time Spooks has stolen a Baron, especially with a champion like Nunu, who was once infamous almost for the champion in the very, very old days. But the Chiefs going to look to counter push at least slightly here with the Baron. Still don't have three out of turrets. Failed that mid lane turret. Very stubbornly still standing here for Besiktas. But Swiper going to go back. Spend some more gold. He's getting massively tanky now as well. And is the Frozen Heart done? It must be close. Doesn't quite have enough yet, it seems like. The item oh, time is just keep getting impressive. He had to actually sell the flask in that situation, which isn't ideal, but he'll have to deal with. Three items now on Vladimir. Three big items getting more and more towards, I guess four items, including the boots, are getting more and more towards the big six item power spike. The front line just got that much more tanky with the frozen heart. Not really necessarily demanding a frozen heart, but the CDR works well. That helps with his mana pool that was hit with some mana nerfs, specifically on his roar of the Slayer. And it works against Lucian. So someone needs to be able to run at Lucian. It's going to be Swiper. Yeah, Chiefs, so with the Baron buff, can they get the tower? They really want this mid out of it. Very stubbornly defended here by Besiktas and Swiffer. Still split pushing here, does have his items. Is quite strong and with the distortion upgraded boots especially, be quite hard to pin down and should have those summoners back at a pretty reasonable clip. And Lucian goes back. That might open up the counter push in the mid lane. Yeah, finally, they might be able to take out this mid out of turret. You might think, okay, they're not breaking the base, not getting massive advantage, but consider the Chiefs literally had no vision of the, their own red side jungle, of the Baron, of anything. So taking any, just arresting what was the snowball coming through of Besiktas and taking a turret, that's already worth These it for the Chiefs. These shields are so big, they're radiant. Gonna get chunked out, does go down to Energy Swiper. Getting in there as well, but Swiffer now has to go in. Nautilus already dead as well, it's 3v5 now. Swiffer is forced to flash over the wall. Charm does land, no tornado, gonna hit instead. Does use the zone, is over, has nothing left. Transfusion comes through, chunks out Energy, but that's three kills for zero. And the pick power of Energy was massive in that fight, feeding both carries with a charm that led to their death. Even against the Baron buff on one member, which is Spooks, they should be able to pick up. No, of course, Spooks died stealing the Baron, so they should be able to push in and take this inhibitor. Although we hit a pause before that yeah, can we happen. We do have a pause here at a very tense moment in the game. And Besiktas finally find an opening there. Again, that vision paying off wonderfully in the jungle. Finally able to get a couple of picks, and suddenly the base is just falling down at this point. Just a crazy pick onto of all people radio. Once again, the trusty spell shield has eluded Radia all today, we have to say, at least in the last two games, where we were watching it with a fine tooth game, struggled in lane at shielding up the Ken and Harass, and in this game in particular, just really not been on form, so he ate the charm, died instantly, and as the fight went on, there was only so much Swiffer could do, felt like he was priced in to go for the dive, regardless though, didn't have the damage, Hemoplague definitely needs multiple members contributing damages to be relevant, and he fell down as well, and it should be an inhibitor, 
And that's the first big advantage Besiktas has been able to get against the Chiefs. Yeah, breaking the base, always important, especially I feel like with these very mid-game centric comps where, especially when you don't have Baron, the fact that you're able to get down a few turrets by winning a team fight against the team that actually does have the Baron, fairly impressive stuff there. And those Jana shields on that mid lane turret really baited the Chiefs to overextend, which actually cost them that team fight. So, and they still haven't broke the outer ring of turrets, let alone anything more than that. They have a pretty damn poor siege comp in general. So I expect we'll jump into the game, see that they've lost their inhibitor, and it'll be interesting to see how the Chiefs will regroup from that situation pastry time. As again, this game on balance has been completely in the favor of Besiktas, barring the crazy steal that came through. Yeah, it's just looked great for them so far. Been playing aggressively in the early stages and have continued going. And as we do pop back in, that mid inhibitor is absolutely dead. And look, we, we saw in the pre-match hype video that the Chiefs definitely respect this Besiktas team. They thought this would be the toughest opposition despite most analysts tipping Ints to comfortably take this tournament. And we're starting to see why. Struggled in their first game against the Bangkok Titans. But this has been much more of the Besiktas before that saw them undefeated with this lineup in the Turkish Champions League. They've now suffered their first defeat with the lineup ever, and they're trying to make their other opponents pay. Yeah, nice gold lead here as well, being built up. Four and a half thousand gold, not massive at this stage of the game, especially 33 minutes in, but decent, absolutely. Here's Super Minions pushing in. They might John finally get the turret, but Jana trying to block it away. Does finally get a double dodge. Actually has to be careful. Rosie going to go in. Hook does land. Kill not does not come in. Spooks flashing in. Radio flashes as well, but the equalizer going to come down. Spooks with a great absolute zero and two massive catches for the Chiefs. Radio though does go down to all of that burn. Radio literally died to the death cap damage coming through from the equalizer. So worth, you have to say, with that particular kill, swapping his life for the AD carry. Now getting a further pick means that they can't keep pushing because they're big range damage dealer is dead and those picks might have actually propelled Chiefs to take some more objectives here but at this point with their AD carry dead it's going to be tricky and these are two fairly not low damage threats but these are two very interesting threats for the Chiefs you have to get them into very ideal melee range positions to maximize your damage in any sort of team fight and their objective control has been the problem you'd think the team with the Nunu wouldn't have problems there but down one, uh, down three dragons to one right now. Now down in turrets as well. After finally getting the outer turret in mid, the gold lead's not massive, but Besiktas have complete control of the rift. I feel like you've really identified the kind of quandary this team comp has. Is this is a brush cam? They are going to go for energy though. Oh, he's going to tip in. Swiffer does come through. But he's ghosting in. Doesn't even have any CC except for the Sanguine pull without a Rylai's built up. Might be looking for it, but who knows at this point. And the Chiefs, if they're looking for brush camps sitting on top of their own pink wards, that does seem like a bit of desperation. Yeah, and when they were doing that extended split pushing, I was actually going to say the next item should be Rylai's if you want to opt into a big split push, Vladimir. Of course, then it actually gives you kill pressure in a very long lane with the double mobility, specifically the ghost interaction with. Uh, the the Rylai's would be quite significant. Swiffer has to return to wave clear duty. I mean, the, the significant thing about this team fight comp Chiefs have, have picked here is that they basically fight together. It's all about these champions with very similar ranges. Consistent damage from Radiant, consistent damage from Vladimir's at about the same range in the fight. They want to hit similar targets to get the most out of the Hemo Plague. It's an awkward fight where basically they have five members all going in aggressively to a team fight. No real kite, no real rangers. They fight together. So if Besiktas gets strong enough, or if Theocles really splits up the threats with the explosive cast, and honestly, that might just be in the middle of the fight, pushing either Vladimir or Sivra away, one of those damage threats separated isn't enough to take down well, the Chiefs are going to go on. The ult has been popped by Raiden. Going in very deep. They want Nardius. He's been altered by Nautilus, but not enough. They're now the Oculus is going to die back in. Swiffer going to get stunned up there, but Gragas going to get kited away. The Culling used there for Lucian as Besiktas moving their front lane in. A good hook lands onto Nardius. He went like down there as well, but Raiden takes too much damage. Brooks gets exhausted. It goes down, but Swiffer going massive. Swiper jumps back in and gets the kill. Now it's even at 2v2. Can they keep chasing the Chiefs? somehow pick up a trade. That Hemo play did so much damage. That's what happens when you have 338 CS already into this game. Putting that split farm to use should be able to pick up some even better item timings. But crucially, they finally win a fight, but there's no objectives to pick yeah, up. Just a trade there as well, not even a win. And as a result, can't really keep pushing. Don't have a man advantage. Don't have a jungler to try and do the Baron either. And Besiktas still holding strong here. That gold lead does diminish a bit 
bit, but they did just pick up their fourth dragon. So all of a sudden, that fifth dragon win condition wide open. And look, Besiktas have been piling on win conditions all game. They should have had the early Baron expertly stolen away with cool, calm collection with the Nunu got them back into this game. Now it's going to be the fact that they've had the run of the Vision. They've had the run of the Dragon. They should have had the early Baron. The only thing keeping Chiefs in this game, honestly, is to some degree power of will and some smart team fighting. They still can potentially win a fight. You just saw the issue there that Swiffer got the damage down, but Radia died first because there's just not the peel. The Nautilus can lock people up, but can't really peel for this Sivir. And you can see what a winning team fight does look for the Chiefs, and they'll scale a bit more now, start to equalize the items that both teams have. And they do, again, have a slight edge, and they're smart team fighters. That's one of their best-looking things all season long for them regionally. And here in this tournament is even from behind, they fight well as a unit. But they've not been doing that. They've been split pushing a lot. Thaldrin's now the one split pushing. He's got his teleport ready to go as well. The Chiefs starting to maybe mount an offensive, but Besiktas, they are deadly at this stage. Chiefs have no reason to respect the split push from Rumble. One of the slowest split pushes in the game. Poor turret damage. Poor minion pushing. They just draw out the teleport. Ultimate use there as well. Radio is okay. Does actually pop the ulti. Lock it. Use there as well by Dumbledore, I believe. No, that's Gragas' lock it. Excuse me. That's a teleport down. Sion still has his teleport. Chiefs can look to try something, but to be honest, their initiation is literally only Sion. So awkwardly, he has to stay grouped with the team. And we brought it up in the last game as well when they had a massive gold lead over Ince. But look at the top and bottom waves right now. Huge stack of red minions that Besiktas have to have expertly built up here. And the Chiefs, again, suffering from a bit of sideways control. In top lane lane, it's actually pushing out for the Chiefs, so that's Never something, mind. but in the bottom lane, I agree with you, that's definitely pushing out at least marginally to Besiktas. At the moment, the minion wave's not causing a big issue. A Chiefs, though, they're just splitting farm at this point, and again, they've got the Vladimir, so they're probably okay with this. They just need to start to ensure that they can keep vision around the Baron area. No, we'll have to see, because Besiktas starting to press their advantage a little bit more again. The gold gap has closed pretty considerably. It's only three and a half thousand gold, and honestly, almost 40 minutes in, it's pretty negligible at this stage of the game, but the Baron lead, the Baron control certainly here as Spooks again just has to check here, but that means I might face check here as well. That's actually a flash forced out by the Nunu, doesn't want to get caught out of position, and Swiffer, I believe, picking up the blue buff for a bit of extra CDR, going to get slightly caught out as well. Let's see red pings onto that massive minion wave. We're talking four or five group minion waves, and another minion wave coming in the top. Someone needs to go clean it out. Rumble's going to take time to pick it up, but he's the one that goes. Yeah, and red minion stacking in the bottom side as well, so we can see some of the members from Bashir Tash backing now, want to spend a bit of the built up gold on the Chiefs. Trying to find a spot here, but that pesky side wave that Rumble trimmed in the bottom side earlier on. Just annulling all of their offensive. They are going to go back in. They're going to try and find the catch on to energy, but he flashes and dashes so far away. Nadius as well zones them out. They can't find anything. And that's definitely the feeling in solo queue whenever you try to gank an Ari. It feels like she covers a lot of ground. She literally covered. That was so much That was space. That was literally the distance between the two turrets covered in one fell swoop. And you can see the engage tools there. Sivan Nautilus, a great combination for for. Engaging on people, really hard engaging with the depth charge. But unfortunately, Ari, one of the few champions that can just get as far away as humanly possible. Basically flashed four times and got away. Not hacking this game, though, guys. That's just the reality of using all those charges of the ultimate and the summoner spell flash. Yep. Going to have that ulti back pretty soon now as well. Going to pick up the blue for even more CDR. And I love the giant spell there as well for a possible uh, Ari Rylai's there as well. And I think Energy realizes that he's going to be one of the big threats that's getting targeted. But Besiktas have great threats here on this team. Thaldrin has become a real threat here in this rumble. Still not building a Zonius, by the way. Just wants all damage all the time. Feels like awkwardly Swiffer is kind of priced in to pick up the death cap, interacts with his passive. It's missing out on a death cap, honestly, on a mage in general is a poor decision. So it means he probably won't pick up the Rylize. He won't really have split push as an option. Chiefs have been looking for the team fight. They feel like they can win after Swiffer took out the backline with that massive Hema play. So maybe it won't be a big situation. Maybe they'll be able to get the fight. They're getting to the point where Sion is unkillable. Although hilariously, look at his itemization choice. They already have a locket. So He's once again gone for this item, but there's the right Yeah, story. they're going to go back in again. Who have they found? It's Lucian this time. They need to flash over. Rainy goes in over the top. Does get the kill. Now it's 4v5. It's a really big pick, but energy is still alive for wave clear. What is the advantage they're going to get? It might be the first dragon for them, the second Swiper dragon. Swiper in trouble. Does get CC'd. He's very tanky. Ulti's back into the team. 
Team Rosie trying to get in there. Swiper doing what he can. A great off from Dumbledore, though. But the Chiefs are going to die back in. And Swiper trying to tank what he can with his passive. But now it's 4v4. And there's no more CC to continue fighting. Easy to kite back for the... Besiktas in this game. Remember, if they pick up a dragon, it's only their second, and they're trying to get they Swiffer. They have to get it, but Swiffer's now in trouble as well. Does pull the charm there. Is Rosie trying to tank it up? Dragon not quite down yet. They have to be careful. Finally take it away to deny the fifth, but Rosie in a whole host of trouble. Now Radiant going to get exhausted. He's on the front line. Does use the heal. Tries to go in, but can't fight 1v3. Spook's now trying to run, but Gragas will chase him down. He will fall as the last, and that completes the ace. And this was a team fight one. Remember, crucially, without Nardeus even there to provide any damage whatsoever. They tunneled on the picking up the dragon to deny the fifth, but it let Vladimir die for free. I feel like they still had to peel off, even if it led to a situation where they didn't pick up the dragon. Giving away multiple members just to rush it down, knowing you'll die anyway. Now Baron is basically a free objective for Besiktas. Look, there were no good decisions there for the Chiefs, but I think actually going for a team fight, they had a semblance of a chance to win. With Lucian not being available, was a better choice than basically suiciding for the second dragon. Yeah, a tower even falls on the top side as well to minions as the Baron will go down there as well. And I agree about the no good decisions, but that's just great play from Besiktas to force Chiefs into a situation where at some point, despite the pace of the last 20 minutes, maybe being a little bit slow, where they eventually would just break and figure out that, we know what, we no longer have anything else we can do. It's a culmination of 43 minutes of map pressure, of smart warding, of good rotations that have come through. The Chiefs, they played smart start two, of course, Vladimir spending so much time split pushing got them to a situation where even in the late game with all these advantages we've spoken about it's only a 7k goal lead at 43 minutes when it could be oh so much more. They relied on Besiktas not making a really strong mid-game movement and they pay that paid off. Besiktas took a long time to actually start the Baron and then eventually were punished for taking so long with the steal. But it's just the weight of what's happened. And off screen, Vladimir dies. Yeah, that's bad news. Swift are getting picked off there by most of the team there. And Ari claims the kill. It's going to be hard to defend 4v5 for the Chiefs, especially with the Baron buff here. Yeah, with the Baron buff riding, they've got a lot of tire damage. There's the charm. They're going in. Swiper's going to try and make it, but he's now caught in the middle of the team. Energy with a great zone, but he gets hooked. Rainy gets the first kill, but they got to peel off for him, but they can't. The Oculus just too tanky. Knocks Swiper back into the team with the cast. He's CC for days as he'll go down as well. There's a 3 for one after the kill on Vlad as well. Swiper, I mean, undead doing what he can, but Thaldrin pops a scrap shield. Besiktas now wrecking the base of the Chiefs in there as well. And this might just be game. Yeah, it's 44 minutes in 50 seconds till Radio respawns. Lucian's still alive. This should be the game for Besiktas. Smartly played by them. Valiant defense by the Chiefs. They could have gone down much earlier in this game. They played to their win conditions, tried to pull it to late. But all the advantages, all the objective snowball eventually counted for Besiktas, and they take out the win. Very well played. Just applied so much pressure. And like, again, like a valve almost, eventually 